Do you have a 60 to 66 truck, but it's a small window and you've always dreamed of having a big window? My name is David Welch. I'm at Brothers Tech Center every single Tuesday, making sure your truck gets back on the road and looks good too. Today, I'm going to show you how to cut out this small window and use Brothers Big Window Conversion Kit to get the truck you always dreamed of. Stay tuned. First, let's take a look at our patch panel. Now, the quality of patch panels these days is just off the charts. You might think to yourself, well, I'm gonna go get another truck and I'm gonna cut one all up and then I'm gonna, no, forget about that. The time and trouble that it would take versus just buying one and going ahead and installing it is just immeasurable. Now, the tools that you're gonna need, really simple stuff, nothing all that outrageous, really. Uh, drill, eighth inch drill bit, uh, spot weld cutter, some cutting wheel, some grinding wheels you're going to need a welder of course and then I've got a few different options on how to install it let's say for instance you've got your truck all painted or it's a nice patina that you don't want to disturb um, I'll show you how to do it that way let's say for instance it's a complete resto and um, you can get a little bit more cutting and welding going on I'll show you how to do it that way too so I've got a lot of different options for you I'll explain this option a little bit later so you just go ahead and stay tuned I'm I'm going to start getting this old guy out of here. Let's take a look at how this panel is attached and how we're going to take it out. Now what some guys like to do is simply cut the spot welds on the side right here and then on the bottom and such and try to pull it all in one mass. I don't like to do that because it's more cumbersome and the chances of doing damage to the edges of your metal that you're going to be saving is pretty high. So what I like to do is cut the mass out first and what I'll be doing is up here on the top I'll just be cutting right below that seam right there. I'll carry it on over to the side right here and bring it on down like this. And I like to mark it because uh, a lot of times when you're cutting all the uh, sparks and all everything, it gets a little difficult to see sometimes. So you want to have something to follow. On the bottom, you're just going to be cutting straight up into the patch panel here. So then we'll go ahead and take care of our spot welds. Now, this little device right here, this is an inexpensive uh, little piece to get. I'm gonna show you two or three other ways to take spot welds off, but this is your nicest, cleanest way. Now you see this little point here? Technically speaking, when you put this on your spot weld, it's supposed to stick in there and stay. But what happens a lot of times is it walks around on you. So what I like to do first is get a little eighth inch drill bit, and I'm just gonna drill in a little bit. I don't have to go through all two pieces or three pieces of metal. I just gotta go into the first piece of metal a little bit so that I've got a little hole for my pin to anchor into and it won't walk around. Now, once I get my front cut off, this back is still attached on this seam lip right here. A couple of different choices you have there is you can simply cut around this lip or you can cut around on the back side, which is what I'm going to do, and then I'll be pulling out the front and the back all at one, at one time. So let me get cut in here a little bit and we'll show you what that looks like. Now this is going to take you a little bit longer to do this way, but it's going to be safer for your overall metal protection, if you will. When we're cutting things like this out, what we want to do is start at the bottom. If I was to start at the top and then start cutting everything off, this might want to fall down on me some. So we always cut our bottoms, then we cut our sides, then we cut our tops. Now, I just want to make a quick little mention about when you're cutting metal out. You want to make sure you don't take your wheel and bury it all the way in. You only want to take it and go the depth of the metal, okay? Because if you take it and bury it all the way in, there are other supports that can be in here, and you could cut those at the same time. We don't want that to happen. So only bury your blade the depth you want to cut. All right, I've got all this cut out all the way around. 
Now we're going to go ahead and cut out the back. Let me show you how to do that. Now we're going to cut off the back and we have to have a little bit of a lip just like you have a little bit of a lip right here for our spot welds to go and for the rubber to hold our window in. If you just take a pen and just try to draw a straight line, it's very difficult. So what you're going to do is you're going to find yourself a washer like this. And you're going to want to find one that's just a little bit bigger than the lip. We want a little bit of extra metal left over as a forgiveness room. So you can see here this is just a little bit taller than that lip. And then all you got to do is put the washer in like this and go all the way around, you'll get a nice consistent line. When I cut this off, I'm going to be cutting to the top of this line. Again, I want a little extra metal left over so that after I put my inside piece in, then I can go ahead and grind both pieces nice and even and keep everything nice and consistent. If you cut too much, then you're going to be in trouble. So let me get this backside cut off and then I'll show you what comes next. Just like on the inside, we'll be cutting the bottom off first, then the sides, and then the tops. Just a more controlled way of doing it. On your corners though, it's difficult to get a grinder and cut it in the corner like that. You can take those small sawzalls and you can cut the corner, or what I do is I'll just basically cut straight across here, straight across here, then after everything's all out, I'll get a grinder and I'll simply grind this down until it's perfect. So here you can see why we cut everything on the bottom and the sides first. I've just got this right here in the middle holding it on and I made sure that everything else is loose and we're ready to go. Once I cut this, it should just come off nice and neat. Let's find out. Yep. This is what it's going to look like when you take everything off and now we've got this extra metal that we're going to have to take off here and on our sides and on the top. Now I just want to give you a close up view of how to properly use your um, spot weld cutter. Now first of all you can see or you can not see as the case may be, it's difficult to find the spot welds. You can run your fingers along and you can find them sometimes. So what you can do is you can get just sand that off and it'll show up a little bit better. You can take a wire wheel. So I don't know if that shows up on camera, but you can see, hopefully, that we have the spot welds right here. So I'm going to use my eighth inch drill bit, and I'm only going to be going into this first piece of metal right here. I have to be sure that I don't go all the way through. Put our spot weld cutter on. And it's usually best to use this at a low speed. If you get going too high, it kind of bounces around on you. Now before I get going too far on this, let me show you some alternatives just in case for whatever reason you don't have a spot weld cutter. Now this does take a little bit more time, it's a little uglier, but it's an alternative. And all you're going to do is just get in a cutting wheel or a grinding wheel and then you're just going to aim for the um, spot weld and you're just going to grind it down until it's weak enough to come off. So 
some other things you can do too is you can get um, die grinders and you can have uh, little grinding wheels on them and you can hit them also but this is your best bang for the buck so get one of these with all my spot welds drilled out now I can take a screwdriver and just gently pry on these you have to be careful because you're going to do damage to the back side if you get too aggressive with this if it does not come off as easily as what you're looking at right here you're going to want to stop and um, find out why get the spot weld cutter and uh, just keep working it but you don't want to get super aggressive with this because you can easily do damage to the back right here now these are pretty easy to do because your um, spot welds are all exposed and easy to find and, and uh, such. So this isn't that big of a deal really and neither is the one on the side right here. And when you're taking this one off you want to come from the bottom and pry it off. You don't want to come from this side and pry it off because if you do then you can mess up this lip right here that the door rubber seal is going to be attached to. But this right up here, this is tough to do. So let me show you how to do that. These spot welds here you basically can't see from this side. You can get outside of the truck and you can look and get them uh, but these are very tough to get to. Now your only choices on this is to take the outside roof off so if you have to do that anyway you get two birds one stone then this will be exposed and you can take care of them from the outside. If you're going to be leaving your roof on like we are then you got a couple of other choices. You can get a Dremel, put a cutting wheel on it or a grinding wheel on it find each individual one and then grind them down. You can also take a screwdriver and a hammer and you can hammer like this. That exposes my spot welds here and then I can go ahead and cut them off and work my way down the line. Now that's a little bit ugly doing it this way because um, it's going to take these spot welds here and it's going to make little bumps on them and we're going to have to knock those back and stuff but without taking off the roof and getting really ugly this is basically my easiest option unfortunately. So give me a few more minutes to get this off then I'll go ahead and take care of all of this light rust right here and I'll show you what we're going to be doing on that next. So there's quite a bit of rust on this uh, when you take it all off and you're going to want to take that off one way or the other. We just used a wire wheel. Uh, you can media blast these and then paint them all up but generally for most of you guys at home what you're going to do is take off most of the rust and then you get something like this. Now you don't have to use this specifically. They have uh, several different products that are relatively the same. And what it is is you're going to take off most your rust. Um, you need a little bit of rust on there for this to bite into. And what this does is it converts the rust to um, iron oxide I think it is and then that will um, not rust in the future so we'll shoot all of that on everything and then we'll let it dry up then I'll actually paint it also when I paint it I want to use a gloss because a glossy paint won't harbor moisture which harbors rust Another thing we're going to be doing when we're working on this is we'll be grinding off what's left of our spot well cutter remnants. They'll be on the back here, they'll be on here, they'll be on the top up here. So you're going to grind all those down. If you bent up any metal, you're going to go ahead and straighten it at the same time. And a lot of times on this back panel right here, you get a lot of dings on the back. So when this is all off, you can go ahead and get a hammer and dolly and do all of your body work and get this all looking good before you put your patch on and that's going to save you some time too. So I'm going to get this all rust boarded then I'll go ahead and paint it all up then I'll show you what comes next. All painted up looking really pretty and we're ready to go back in. Now I've taken my patch panel and I've trial fitted a few times. I wanted to make sure there wasn't anything uh, bunching up in my way. I did trim just a hair off right here and um, the main kicker on this is our line right here for right now. Now if the roof was off of this we could simply put this up. We could clamp it all the way around the edges. We could drill the holes out and weld it all up and it'd be nice and neat. But I don't want to take the roof off on this. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to get this glue 
This is special metal bonding glue that's specifically made for this. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this in the seam all the way around here. And we're, then we're gonna put it up. Now this here only, you can only manipulate this before it dries hard for about a, an hour, hour and a half, and then it's a done for. So what we've got to do is put this on, and we have to be sure that when we go up in here, we figure it out how we're gonna clamp things and get it all set up, because once it's glued, it's gonna be a real mess. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this on, then I'll get it up in there. I'm gonna get this line here perfect. Now I'm not gonna work on the rest of my lines, okay? I mean, I wanna make sure I'm looking good here and things like that, but I'm not going to, um, uh, get clamps on everything, okay? I'm just gonna have enough clamps so that I can make sure this line is looking good. After the glue is dry, then I can go ahead and work the rest of my lines, but that'll be tomorrow. So let me glue this on up, get it in there, and I'll show you how I clamped it up. So when I'm doing this, I'm going right in the corner and I'm putting on a reasonable amount. I'm not getting too crazy because when you put it in there, uh, a lot of it is going to splooge out. So if you get it in the corner, then you're going to have a better chance of adhesion and less of it coming out. But it is going to be coming out. So you're going to want to have rags and some um, mineral spirits or acetone to wash off any of the excess glue. You might notice that on the edge right here, I have grinded off some of the paint and gotten some good scratches into the metal. That'll just help the glue um, stick even better. All right, it's best if you have a little bit of help for this section here. And you just gotta tuck it up underneath and pop it up in. And what I've done is I've gotten some two by fours here that I can just stick underneath and help it support while I'm getting it to fit in just right. Oh, there we go. Now this line right here, this is the line we're working with right now. We gotta get that line set just right. You can see that it, it's pretty off right now. And you don't have a way to clamp it really well. So what I'm gonna be doing is just getting some C clamps here on either side, and then I'll go ahead and get some straps to simply pull it forward, and now you can see we're lining up better. So I'll do that, then I'll snug things up, I'll get it all lined up perfect, and then we'll get the excess glue out of there because once it dries, it's real hard to get out. So here you can see how I have my straps on my C-clamps and it's pulled it out and it's nice and even here. And my glue is coming out and I'm just gonna use my finger to go along the edge and I wanna make sure that I don't have any gaps in there and it's looking all nice and even all the way around the side. So I'll just use my finger and then wipe off any extra onto a rag. Then I'll take a little bit of acetone or a little bit of uh, mineral spirits thinner and then I'll clean up any extra here, not getting into my seam because I don't want to pull any of the glue out of the seam. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let this sit for 24 hours and get all dried up. And so I know this is not gonna be disturbed. If I try to start um, welding up any of the rest of this stuff, it's gonna upset that and it's gonna make my gap off and such. So we'll let that be and we'll come back tomorrow and finish this all up. We've been sitting overnight. Let's see if the bonding glue worked. looking really good and solid. Now the reason we did it this way, just to uh, reiterate, is that the line in the top right here, where these two patch panels meet, um, it is difficult to get that line right when you're not going to be taking your ceiling off, your roof off. So we had to get this right. If we tried to work on this and then try to work on other, our other lines, before our glue dried, then this would jostle all around and, and get messed up. But now we're solid, now we can finish off the rest. 
So we've got everything secure to top. Now we can go ahead and finish off everything else. What I'm gonna start on first is this edge right here. I wanna make sure that this is all good. Then I can clamp up the rest of everything else and get it set. If I try to clamp this up first, it might take this and pull it away or something like that. So I have to get this secured to get everybody else secured. When I'm gonna be doing this, I'm gonna be doing what's known as a Rosetta weld, or Rosette weld. It looks kind of like that. I'll have to grind that tip down a little bit, but it's the closest thing to looking like a, a spot weld that you can get with a welder. You can also buy those um, spot weld things, but I've already got a welder, so I'm gonna do it like this. More than likely, you do too. Now, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna drill through the first piece of metal. We're gonna drill about halfway into the second piece of metal. I'll get a wire wheel. Then I'll clean it off a little bit, and then I'll go ahead and weld it. And when I weld it, what I'm trying to do is get the weld on the second piece of metal. I'll get that going, and then I'll bring it out and get the um, patch panel here. So let me show you what that looks like. We're gonna go about every four inches or so. Oops. Get our wire wheel. And then I weld it. So I'm gonna be aiming for right dead center of that so that I can get the second piece welded. If you just try to cover up the hole, you might just get a weld on the outside, nothing on the inside. Now if you accidentally drill all the way through, not a big deal, we'll just weld it on the other side too. So I just get the center started, make sure I got a good well going there, then I'll do a bit of a circle, poof, I'm done. So we're going to go ahead and keep securing around the perimeter of the panel here before we do the window. And we want this metal to be as close as possible here. So you got a couple of different options. If you're going to be painting the truck and you don't have to worry about drilling a hole through the cab, then you can just put a small little bolt in there, go ahead and bolt it down, you're good to go, take it back out, weld it. You can also get a board and you can press it up against there, hold it nice and firm while you're welding. So you got a few different options on how you can do that. I'm going to go ahead and finish this off and then we'll go ahead and take care of the window. Now this lip right here on the patch panel, it's a little bit skinny, it's a little small. So what I'm gonna do here is just weld right on the edge uh, in order to get a good weld. I'll just get and clean that off a little bit. I'll go every four inches, I'll go all the way around. Then I can go ahead and sand this uh, remnants down. So let me get this set up and I'll show you what comes next. With this welded, it's nice and solid. If I would have tried to sand this before I had welded it, it would just flop around a lot. So wait till you get it welded to go ahead and finish this off. You'll be finishing off your corners right here. Now in order to do that, you can use a little metal jigsaw and with a small blade and cut it out. You can also use a flap wheel, which is what I'm going to be doing. These are really good for getting contours, but you really don't want to use it on a straight edge because it can kind of give you little grooves in there. So what you want to do for that is use a grinding wheel like this. And that's going to give you a nice flat surface all the way across. Now I measured this uh, before I cut everything out uh, and it was a 3 8 to about a 7 16 lip going around. So I'm gonna err on the side of caution and go with 7 16 inches and grind all that out and make it all nice and smooth and everything. I'll get a piece of glass and test it, make sure we've got a little bit of a gap between the metal and the glass for the rubber gasket to work before I paint it. Uh, but basically we're all done. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grind this all out and then I'll start on my body work. Maybe we'll show you what that looks like later, but you're gonna have to subscribe to our YouTube channel to be able to check that out. Should also check out our Instagram and our Facebook too, because they're cool too. 
My name is David Welch. I'm at Brothers Tech Center every single week making sure your truck gets back on the road and looks good too. We'll see you guys next time, man.